What's good ladies and gents, welcome to the MKO Pugilism Boxing Channel where we talk all things boxing. Remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, put it on also to get notified of the latest content as when it drops on the channel. So let's get into this one. So one of the big talking points throughout this whole week, even including I saw a video, a little short video dropped today with uh, Michael Conlon from Ireland dropping his opinion on this subject. We're going to talk about Conor Ben and his interview with Piers Morgan that took place about four days ago from today. So this is an interview where it was quite a big one because Conor Ben obviously has failed the two drugs test. Um, he's always said that he is innocent, he's completely innocent of all charges, he's never taken anything. Um, he said a few bits in sort of social media, but he's never really come out and sort of stated his case on this matter. So that's what this was about, as far as I, I thought, my opinion. And um, so let's talk about this interview. So I've got down a few things here. Piers Morgan, he's a guy people hate, some people love. It is what it is. He opened the interview with a, you know, basic straightforward comments. He just said, look, uh, the court of public opinion, they've basically condemned you. They've been brutal towards you. As far as they're concerned, you're basically guilty. And he stated, and he rightly said it, that people generally, when these cases come up, they do assume the worst. So when there's a rumor of somebody taking drugs in sports, the public will normally just assume the worst for that person. And Pierce, he rightly stated that normally they're right. Usually in most cases, when people do this sort of thing, they are right. And you know, we know in boxing, it's true, it's happened. Uh, some of my favorites um, that I always mention, Tyson Fury, he had to serve a ban for the PDs and all that, bore me and all that stuff. Billy Joe Saunders, another fighter that I have great respect for, another one. Um, you know, the list goes on. You had Jarrell Miller, not really, not one of my favourites, but every drug in the world, he took it, you know. You had Canelo, he's taken it, but he's still revered, it's still a great fighter and whatever. So, you know, people normally assume the worst, they're normally right. I suppose I, I kind of see where Piers Morgan's coming from there. Now, for Conor Ben in this interview, he was just sort of very passionate, very sincere. And one thing I will say off the bat is that, you know, thoughts and prayers with Conor Ben, because one of the saddest things in this interview was that he was mentioning suicidal thoughts and how it all sort of got to him and it was getting him down and he was sort of crying himself to sleep and he didn't want to sleep because he didn't want to wake up to the backlash and everything that he's getting. And for me, that's one of the saddest things in life. I, I hate to see that sort of thing where someone's having suicidal thoughts. So definitely my thoughts and prayers with Conor Ben, regardless of, you know, whatever happens with this. I hope that he's, he's over that sort of thing now and that he just gets on with life. But anyway, so Ben, he, he stated that, you know, if he'd done something wrong, he would hold his hands up to it. He would admit that he, he'd done something wrong if he actually did it. But he said I'm com he's completely innocent. He denied even a possibility of of saying that something could have accidentally got into his system. So he said that without a shadow of a doubt, this uh, clomiphene substance, he's never heard of it and it has never, ever been in his system. He, he was that adamant to the point where he was all going on as if to say, this couldn't have even happened to me by accident. This couldn't even be in my system by accident. So he was very passionate, very adamant about making that point. And he also said, and if something I found quite interesting was that he said that when he first failed a drugs test, he wasn't worried about it. When Piers Morgan asked him, he said, surely this is, this is going to be every boxer's nightmare. Every, I think he used the term athlete, but he said, look, every athlete's nightmare is they find out they failed the test. Ben was like, nope, I, was, I wasn't worried when I first failed the test. To some people who believe he's guilty, that's going to be a red flag to them. He said he only really started to have concerns when the second test uh, came back. His second test came back and he'd failed it. And 
he immediately thought that, um, whereas the first time he thought, oh, that's just an error, they can run another test and then I'll come back okay. Second time around, he was talking about to Piers that, ah, oh, this time I thought maybe someone's done, you know, I was looking around and thinking, who's done this to me? Who's, 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 who's done this? Like, who's to blame? So he, it was only that second time around where he said he had concerns about this drug testing thing. So, you know, kind of as a summary, as a summary point, um, I'd, as a whole, I don't think this interview really uh, cleared his name. Um, and I don't think this interview really proved his innocence. Um, as we went further into the interview, if you watch it, his whole line of defense seemed to be that, well, he's 26 years old. So the idea that this thing could give him a testosterone boost, why would he need it? He's, I'm 26 years old, Pierce. I wouldn't need it. I wouldn't need this testosterone boost. And I've never heard of it. I've never heard of this thing. So how am I going to put something in my body I've never heard of? It seemed to be his whole defense was all about his sincerity and the fact that he's young and he doesn't need this stuff. Um, and, you know, it, it's, there's almost a bit of naivete with um, Conor Ben. You could see it coming out throughout this interview because he seemed, he came across as if to say that people should just believe him because of the passion with which he speaks. And he did speak very passionately. He, the way that he spoke and the way he came across and, you know, you could tell that he, he really looked like he meant every word that he said. You know, that's one thing that kind of came across to me that the way he spoke was there was sometimes he was welling up with emotion and he really seemed to believe every word he said. And he seemed to be, he came across as if, well, that should be enough. The fact, look at how I'm speaking to you. Do you think I would do this to my dad? You know, do you think I'm that type of person? Do you think I would do this to my family, to my son? He's got to watch this. You know, do you really think I would do this to my character and my family and my dad? You really think I would I would go around and do that? Like, I'm that type of guy. And it was just like, believe me, I'm telling you I'm innocent. Just believe me. It's like he, he, he comes across kind of naive in that sense that he's almost expecting people to believe him just because he says so, just because he wouldn't do it and he's a good person and blah, blah, blah. But I think that's kind of naive of him to, to think that because at the end of the day, as Morgan said in the beginning of the interview, he said that whenever these situations come up, people will protest their innocence. You know, so whenever you hear of these drug cases, in the guilty people and in it they always say that they're innocent they always say they're innocent he said that from the word go did Piers Morgan so you know you go further and you find Ben is is it's almost like he's not getting the fact that yes okay you're gonna say you're innocent but it's it's not about just saying you're innocent you've got to prove that you're innocent because you know, when we look at the facts of this whole thing, the fact of the matter is he's failed two drugs tests. That's Those are, are facts. There's no dispute about that. There's no doubt about that. Um, you know, no doubt about that at all. Um, the only sort of the, the, the leg he's kind of got to stand on is uh, with the um, WBC because... Um, the WBC, they said they're testing cyclists for, you know, and they believe that this clomiphene can be found in eggs. And they said in their investigation, um, it is it was in Conor Ben's system, but they're happy to say that they don't believe he's intentionally taken this substance. But the interesting thing was that came out in this interview was that Conor Ben was kind of bringing their... Um, their, their, what the WBC said as his as part of his defence because look they found me innocent but then when Piers Morgan turned around and said well they didn't say there's something wrong with the testing they just said that you didn't intentionally take this the substance and then Conor Ben was like well no 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 they're wrong WBC is wrong in that sense because I I never agreed with this whole egg thing 
and I and Piers Morgan was like, well, so you're denying, you, you don't, do you accept this was in your system? Conor Byrne said, no, I don't accept this was in my system at all. So it was like in one sense, he's agreeing with the WBC, but then when you, when you break down what the WBC actually said, which is that you took it, but it was unintentional, then he's denying what the WBC says. So it was quite interesting the way he kind of brought the WBC's findings into the interview for his defence. But then he, it was almost like he hadn't understood the breakdown that they're not saying it weren't in your system. They're just saying it was, you done it unintentionally. So he kind of ex brought, took with one hand, sorry, gave with one hand, took away with the other. So, you know, he kind of rejected what they said and he claimed that, you know, his proof was kind of that he'd had multiple uh, tests which were negative, no problems. And then, you know, after testing it a few more times, then the negative came up. So he said his dossier kind of proved something with that. Um, he also made the claim that he's going to, you know, Piers Morgan asked him because he, he did mention a while ago that he's going to sue the British Boxing Board of Control. Piers Morgan said, well, is that still the case? And he said, yeah. He said, he, you know, because of loss of earnings and uh, things of that nature, that's why he's going to be trying to sue the board. I don't know whether that's going to work. I mean, I don't know whether the board could even afford it. He's, he's you know, I think he, they were talking about figures of millions in in other things that Conor Bench posted, like talking like 3.7 million or some crazy figure. And he also talked about that he's going to, um, he's in, I think he said he was in some sort of talks about uh, suing even the labs because he believes they're, you know, he, he was careful not to say the labs done things intentionally, but he's he's looking at legal action because of what they may have done accidentally. They they may have because he feels that his failures are, are not down to it being in his system, but down to some sort of error within the labs, which is another one that um, I can see why a lot of people think he's guilty on that because. They, they do loads and loads of tests in these labs. Um, I can't recall really, not in recent history at least, um, a case where a lab has, has um, made that sort of error. You know, you've got A and B samples. There's a lot in place there so that they, they, they don't make these errors. So yeah, the, the, for me, that's just my sort of thoughts on it. Um, I'm of the mindset now that he... You know, unless there's some sort of amazing proof that comes out, it seems to me that he's, you know, whether he intentionally or unintentionally took this substance, there's at least, you know, according to the test, at least there's at least a sort of trace amount. So I think I'm of the mindset based on what I know from, from now on, I think the substance was definitely in his system and... I, uh, you know, could be unintentional, could be maybe a nutritionist that he's, he's working with and maybe he doesn't know he's taking it, that that's a possibility, I suppose. Um, but as far as the interview, I think it didn't really do anything to prove his innocence. He definitely didn't uh, prove his innocence on this interview. He definitely didn't um, clear his name in this interview. Um, and I think really we with um, opinions on him, I don't think this interview will have changed people's opinions one way or the other. I think if you think Conor Ben's guilty, you're still going to think he's guilty now. If you think he's innocent, you know, you're still going to probably be in the same position now. Um, but yeah, it didn't really do anything for him. It, did, it didn't do anything good for him, I don't think. It just left things right where they were. Um, you know, in a sense, it may have even made things worse. But anyway, let me know your thoughts on this Conor Ben interview he had with uh, Piers Morgan. And until next time, this is MKO Pugilism over and out.